evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World Show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host, as always, Richard Tiemann. This is the always growing, ever expanding, award winning fan show. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. It is Wednesday, which means it's kind of BattleBots Day here on the Fan Show. And, uh, you know, I think we got a good one for you tonight. Uh, in case you missed it, in case you didn't see the posts on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, which I, I don't know how you're listening if you don't know how to follow on, on those, but it's okay. That aside, we've got a great one. Ray Billings. That's right. Not the bad boy of BattleBots, but who I believe is BattleBots' greatest villain ever. Uh, greatest unintentional villain. And yes, he does talk about that. Uh, we had a great conversation last night. And, you know, it's it's really something about TV. As I say in the interview teaser, uh, television needs its characters. Even in reality, in the, even in reality TV, There are characters. People will play certain roles or TV will portray them as certain characters for certain roles. It's inevitable. You can't can't get around it. Uh, It's it's what sells. It's what gets ratings. It's what sells subscriptions. I guess now Uh, in 2018, we're talking about who's subscribed to what uh, different networks and channels and. you know, whether it's Sling TV or if you just subscribe to maybe the Discovery Channel Network or USA, you know, wh- whatever it is, however you watch TV, if you do watch TV, and yeah, you watch TV, you got to have something that sells, right? Uh, and that's characters, that's drama, that's action, and BattleBots has it all, and Ray Billings is one of the biggest cogs in that particular machine. So, yeah, I was very happy to have him back. Uh, Last time we talked, he was the last guest of uh, my BattleBots one-on-ones when I was doing it during Season 2 on ABC. So it was great to have him return to the show. We do have some video content for you as well once we reach that point in the season. Uh, The Desperado tournament happened last week, and then uh, there's going to be some thoughts on that. I will share mine probably tomorrow. Um, I'm not well prepared for today's episode because, in all honesty, I didn't think I was going to be doing a live episode. Uh, Bobby Brown, who, in case you missed it, was on the show last night of uh, Bass Battles and All-Star Bass Fishing. Uh, We went out on the lake today, uh, Long Lake up here in Washington. He's scouting potential tournament spots for next year for All-Star Bass Battles. And uh, we hit the water, we had some fun, and his engine, uh, his motor, decided to start acting a little funny on the way back. Uh, Luckily, it was on the way back and not on the way out, because Long Lake is, well, (laughs) a long lake (laughs) uh, in every sense of the word. So we could have had a long tow back. Uh, either by another boat or just on that electric trolling motor. Now, I've done that before. I I have gotten towed in by another boat, and I have uh, made the the trek back to wherever the launch is with either a trolling motor or an electric trolling motor, and it's not fun, (laughs) especially when you get from A to B in like three seconds flat because you're in a bass boat that just has all gas, no quit, except for when the engine starts acting erratically. So uh, we came back at about 1 o'clock. We were going to go back out here probably in an hour, and he called me up about an hour after I left uh, the launch and said, hey, uh, I was putting my boat back up on the trailer, and it quit again. So uh, I'm not so sure that this is a good idea to get back out there, uh, especially if we were going to venture farther than we did down the lake uh, this morning. So... Uh, to be continued. We still got some content. Uh, we still had a, a start and a finish because uh, we were going to do it in two parts. But um, I do want to thank him for making the trip up. I wish it was a bit more worth his while. But I think the from a scouting perspective, you know, from what he wanted to accomplish, he accomplished that. But Washington Lakes, they can be a fickle beast. That they can. So thank you, Bobby Brown, for taking me out. We had some fun, a lot closer than it was between me and Brian Clum of Clum Dog Outdoors fishing for Mackinac up on Priest Lake. But overall, uh, the debut 
uh, or I guess will be debut of the outdoors division of the fan show has been a success. You know, I'm not going to say smashing success. Things could have gone better, but I think all things considered, yeah, it went pretty well. Uh, about as well as you can get, you can do something that was sort of created on the fly and was by demand. And so here we are. Um, in other news, uh, the Fan Show Facebook page has reached 1,000 likes. So thank all of you. It really means a lot. Uh, I went to bed last night and I was two away. And I was like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be like one away, you know. <laughs> So I woke up at like five this morning to get ready to go out to uh, to Long Lake with Bobby Brown, and then I didn't have service until like ten o'clock when we went. You can have service in one end of the lake and not have service at all at the other end. So we started at the end that didn't have service and worked our way back to the end that did. So about ten thirty, I have all these notifications and I look, and there we are, one thousand and three. So uh, thank you, Fan Nation, so much. There is a swag bag that I will put together for the winner which we, once we draw a winner. And you have through the weekend, because I'm in a generous mood, uh, to go ahead and get your, uh, you know, your entries by sharing the page. It doesn't do any good to share the post about the, the contest. Share the page so that people will like it. And then you can leave a review on iTunes. If you don't have iTunes, you can go to Spotify, SoundCloud, or iHeartRadio and share the links to those. Whichever one you listen to, uh, share the link, and that will get you more entries into the contest for the 1,000-like swag bag giveaway, which I'm very excited for. Uh, Bobby Brown even said he was going to throw in some all-star bass fishing uh, swag in there to help sweeten the swag bag, so that'll be good. Maybe Brian Clum will want to throw in some Clum Dog stuff. Maybe BattleBots will want to throw in some BattleBots stuff. I don't know. But a 1,000 likes, man. Who would have thought? I certainly didn't. I remember when I was just trying to get a 100 likes. <laughs> and here we are 900 later. Oh, wow. What a, what a run. So we've got a 1,000 likes on Facebook. We've got over 9,000 and something follows on Twitter. And then we've got like 450 follows on Instagram. So everything is trending in the right direction. July was a record-breaking month for listens. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. So let's go ahead. Let's get to the headlines. Let's get to Ray Billings. So without further ado, here we go into today's uh, BattleBots special episode this Wednesday on The Fan Show. Preseason football officially, officially begins tomorrow. We did, of course, have the Hall of Fame game between the Bears and Ravens, but as far as if you're a fan of any other 30 teams left that have yet to play, well, tomorrow is your lucky day. Uh, we have the slate for Thursday, August the 9th, and that is the Browns at the Giants. We'll get to see uh, number one overall draft pick Baker Mayfield against the Giants with their new backfield weapon in Saquon Barkley. Then we've got the uh, Panthers and Bills, um, the Bears and Bengals, uh, the Steelers and the Eagles, the Saints and the Jaguars, the Bucks and the Dolphins, the Redskins and the Patriots, Rams and Ravens, Titans and Packers, Texans and Chiefs, Cowboys and 49ers, hell yeah, Colts and Seahawks, and then that will do it for your Thursday slate. Uh, how many of those games are all starting at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific? Well, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six games starting at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Two games at 7.30 Eastern, 4 Pacific. One game at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Another at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. And finally, the last two, San Francisco and Dallas. And Seattle, uh, or I'm sorry, Dallas at San Francisco, Indianapolis at Seattle. That will be at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. So I'll be on during majority of these games doing the show, and I won't even have to miss my own game. I love it. I love it. 
Now, look, I don't care about preseason football. In fact, I was on a show yesterday, uh, the Just Another Football podcast, and they asked me what I thought about training camp and preseason, and I don't put hardly any anything into opinions formed out of OTAs. Get out of here. Um, training camp, yep, definitely not. And then preseason especially, because preseason is the dress rehearsal, right? But it's what you do when the clock, you know, when that first horn blows for the game to start, and the and now the points matter. Now the games matter. Your whole season is 16 games, and you've, you've got to start out hot because it's harder to hit stride later in the season and play catch-up than it is to start hot and maybe fizzle a little bit because the, if you do it the latter, you've got a little bit of wiggle room there, right? You can drop a game or two. Now, of course, seeding is going to come into play and who you would host or travel to, but you, you want to win that first game. You want to show that you've got things clicking out the gate. Now, we've seen a lot of teams catch on later on and be pretty dominant because they're the ones that stay healthy or they're the ones that make the adjustments. They're the ones that saw their flaws early and decided to fix it and, and dominate. And that I think is the beauty of the NFL. So Baker Mayfield and Saquon Barkley, that'll be an interesting matchup. Uh, the Panthers, I don't believe had really anyone of noteworthy being there. The bills though, they just got the, the Browns former wide receiver, Corey Coleman. Uh, so we'll see if he suits up, uh, the bears. We'll see uh, second year Mitchell Trubisky against the Bengals, uh, Steelers, not much there. The Eagles, uh, we'll see Carson Wentz, hopefully return, um, under center. Uh, the Saints, Drew Brees and company in the Jaguars, who were uh, who finished the season pretty damn strong last year. Buccaneers without Jameis Winston. Or wait, I think he can play in preseason, but it's it doesn't matter because he, he's facing a suspension at the beginning of the season. And Tannehill's Dolphins, again. Uh, Alex Smith's Redskins. Now, that'll be interesting against the New England Patriots. The ramped-up Rams and the Baltimore Ravens. Will we see more Lamar Jackson? The new-look Tennessee Titans, because they got their new uniforms, and I don't know why, against the Packers. Uh, the Texans and Chiefs, Cowboys, and the Jimmy Garoppolo-led 49ers. Uh, the return of Andrew Luck against the Seahawks. And then your Friday games, you got two of them. Falcons and Jets, Lions and Raiders. And then Saturday, you will uh, bring it all home with the Vikings and Broncos. Broncos now led by Case Keenum. And the Vikings now led by who? You guessed it, Kirk Cousins. Uh, Chargers at Cardinals. Phillip Rivers versus Sam Bradford. <laughs> I, don't, I, I think uh, all the starters play the first series in this first game, and that's it. Then they'll maybe play two series uh, or even a full quarter in the second game and then the third game you don't really hear much fourth game get out of here you're talking about guys fighting for position so there's your preseason schedule tomorrow as far as the actual news news coming out of the nfl uh earl thomas stops by texas practice amid his holdout i'm pretty sure he's aiming for Dallas, right? Can we can we officially like say that his his sights are set <laughs> on being a cowboy? Uh, let's see. Oh, what else have we got here today? Oh, Hard Knocks starts. I think it started last night. I don't care though. Hard Knocks is not better than All or Nothing, so I don't I don't care for it, especially when it's about the Browns. <laughs> um, uh, is Dez staying in Texas? I don't know. Somebody was saying that he was headed to Cleveland. <laughs> God, what a mess that is. And let's see what to watch for during week one of preseason. There's always that article, is there not? And let's see. Raiders want Donald Penn to take a small pay cut. Yeah, that'll go over well. Um, Jamal Adams. Jets gave the bare minimum in 2017. Cool. Um, thanks for letting us know. We kind of figured that. Unless it was the Jets, the Jets dance to everything. <laughs> That's great. 
All right, folks. Um, Desperado tournament happened. We've got more battle bots coming up Friday. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. I am kind of beat and exhausted from today's outing with Mr. Bobby Brown. Got a great episode, a great interview with Ray Billings that I will play for you guys after this commercial break. So don't go anywhere. Plenty more of the fan show coming up right after this. You're listening to The Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight, Farouk. Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's The Fan Show. Do you know him as Kevin from the league? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am, but the 1% do. They yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it was like that scene in The Simpsons, like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy, Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on Sunday. top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to welcome back to the show the ultimate BattleBots villain, Ray Billings of Tombstone. How you doing, Ray? Yeah, I'm really good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> you know, uh, you are sort of the um, the standard that I compare certain people to when it comes to their how their, I, I guess, personality or character is portrayed. <laughs> On BattleBots, uh, and, and everybody says that you're like the, the best villain out there. And uh, <laughs> I, I keep telling people, yeah, but when you meet him, like he couldn't be a nicer guy. How do you feel about the role of being the villain of BattleBots? Uh, you know, I, I don't know what this says about my personality, but I, I <laughs> slipped into this villain role a lot easier than I thought I would, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> You know, it, it's sort of kind of a, a thing that they seem – the TV folks know what they're doing. They they know what, what's going to make for an interesting show, and they kind of need somebody to be in my spot. They need somebody that has a good chance of winning, but also, you know, will, will motivate – you know, I'm like a, a Dale Earnhardt of, of, of this. You either love me or hate me, but it, there's kind of like nothing in between. And and that's I think that's kind of what they, what they needed for the show, and – uh, you know, I, I was just the guy that fit all those categories. I mean, I have enough personality to pull it off, but I also have the robot to pull it off too, which is which is important. Yeah, your robot is definitely a perfect reflection of your your personality. You know, all, all business with a little bit of maniacal laughter there at the end. Uh, <laughs> and, and I love watching Tombstone. I really do. It was. Uh, was great to see it up close and personal but you know you and i uh when i was down there we talked a, a bit about the pairing of battle bots and discovery so we can we can skip that i'm more interested with you and in, as you know everybody's got their own origin story uh yours i guess is a, a bit of a unique one like how did you even get into bot fighting and how did you come up with uh, the bot we know as tombstone um well when i when i first started this a long time ago i i actually taught computer networking at a college um and my boss the department head was a he was a big BattleBots fan and watched the show back when it was on comedy central and so he would he would tape the show and he'd bring the vhs tapes into work and <laughs> and we, we we would we would watch him together and I had a lot of fabrication background, cutting, welding, grinding, uh, and he had a lot of electronics background. And so between the two of us, we decided that this was something that, that him and I were going to do. Um, unfortunately, life took him in different directions. He got a job elsewhere, moved on, did other things. But that's sort of where the bug started for me. And pretty much from that point on, it just sort of morphed into this father and son project between me and my boy, Justin. And we've been doing it for 17, 18 years now. 
Yeah, and I think it's great when it's a family affair. Obviously, you have the the Vasquez family, uh, which they are uh, that's great like, folks, <laughs> great group there, and they it's are. pretty much they're, they're awesome. The the family that fights robots together stays together, apparently. And you and your son <laughs> are are no exception. You guys do great work, but you know, you look at Tombstone, and it, it's just sort of this. It stands out, but not in the way that a witch doctor or a hypershock would stand out. I mean, I don't even think, if I recall right, right. that there's a, a single mention of a sponsor anywhere on that bot, and there's no theme to it. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to come out in a Grim Reaper outfit, I think that would be the closest thing that we've had <laughs> to you in any kind of costume. But I, why? Yeah. how did you decide to, one, uh, its weapon and its design, it works you know, both upside down, right side up, but also just to decide to kind of skip the gimmick and get down to business. Well, okay, I always wanted the the, the robot to put on a good show. That mm -hmm. was that that was always my thing. Was was how it functioned was more important than anything else. Me, uh, the 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 how it looked, uh, any 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 other piece had to be secondary to how it actually worked in the arena. And so, you know, I slowly over time just keep improving the design, keep improving all the things that would break on it to get it to be that class-dominating machine. When, when I first started, there were other robots that were class-dominating machines. And, you know, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to earn my spot there at the top. I wanted to be the guy that everybody else wanted to – it was worried about, that had to plan for and you know it was just a it was just a slow you know evolution over time to get it because when I first built that design we're talking two thousand three something like that um, you know it was a middle of the pack robot at best and so it, it actually took a long time before I, I I got all the bugs worked out and got it to the the chiseled machine that you see on TV. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh damn near flawless machine i mean every machine has the, their flaws but it just seems like the way that it's put together it, it's just such a calculated <laughs> terrorizer in that in that battle box and it's so entertaining to watch now uh this season obviously done a little differently than past seasons a lot of people are uh they're more fan than foe of the sort of regular season fight card style and then of course now we're in the second half of the season where we will see a tournament uh, based on those regular season results in fact we have the desperado tournament that just started which we can touch on in a second here but you know sure. this is testing uh the teams or the drivers and their their depth as far as equipment and longevity of their of their bot which you haven't had any problem with but then there's also the side of you know, uh, certain matchups and TV not only needs its characters, but it needs its entertainment value. And you got put against Minotaur, the first right. episode of the season. Like, how do you feel from a champion standpoint, being uh, what could have possibly been the last champion of BattleBots until we got this one uh, going into this and then now seeing it all play out? Like, do you feel like there was a spotlight on you, a target on you? What was the mentality for season three? I, well, okay. There's, there's always, there's always going to be a target on me, even before I won, because I'm still, I'm, I'm still the guy everybody is afraid to fight. I'm still that guy. I've always been that guy. So, in that regard, it didn't, that didn't seem unusual that everybody's gunning for Tombstone. That's just, that's just normal how these things play out. This, th this new format though is definitely harder on big kinetic energy robots like mine um because you're, you're going to have to go through all of your fight card fights before you ever get to the tournament and so your your depth of parts and the ability of your team to keep the robot going is just paramount at this point and uh, it's definitely a, a a different it's a different flavor from a competitor standpoint of what's going on there's a lot of stuff about it that's great you know um if you had sponsors before and you, you showed up and you lost one fight and those sponsors never got to see their logo on TV or whatnot, it's pretty hard to get that sponsor to come back and sponsor you again for future seasons. Yeah. This, this way we've got, we've got every, everybody gets those, those fight card fights. And so even if you're, even if you're struggling a little bit up front, you're still going to get some exposure for those sponsors. You're still going to get your matches in the arena to try to start working your bugs out. 
And and so from from most perspectives, it, th- this format is much better than anything they've done before. The, the downside is then they throw back to back Minotaur and Gigabyte against me, and so the, the it, it's a it's a lot harder for big kinetic energy robots to keep running for the whole event. Yeah, it, it's definitely testing out several different things that you may have otherwise overlooked, uh, either as a fan or as a Bob builder, you know, because it's no longer a one and done or, you know, if, hey, if you can win four fights, you're a champion. Like, you got to win four fights just to get into the tournament to maybe then be a champion. Yeah. Um, I love yeah. it as a, as a, from a fan standpoint. I really do. I like everyone having sort of an equal opportunity. But as we've mentioned on uh, previous shows here with different Bob builders, you know, it's kind of uh, you have bombs shell sitting there at zero and three but they've been put up against some of the best in the battle box now of course right. if you want to be the best you have to beat the best but you get you know will bales of hypershock who gets dismantled one week and then he gets sort of a, a soft pitch in battle royale with cheese another you know it's uh right. That now we have this Desperado tournament, which I, I will admit, I was surprised that some of the names I saw in there, who would have thought that Don Hudson's bot would have to be in a Desperado tournament or Valkyrie, uh, but but there they are. So uh, right. this is before we even know what the seeding is for the rest of the tournament. What did you think about a sort of wild card thing like the Desperado tournament? Well, it, it was great because it played well for TV. And, yep. and and at, at the end of the day, if we don't have a show, we don't have an event. So so anything that, that improves our, our, our viewership and whatnot is is super important. We, we have to continue to, to put on a good show so people will watch it. And I think that played well for that. Um, and th- the other thing is, you know, you basically had to win three fights in a single day in order to win that Desperado tournament. And whoever was going to come out on top of that tournament, they had they had to earn that spot to get into that tree of, tree of sixteen. I, I I didn't feel like it, there was anything bad about that at all. They they actually had to work really hard to get to the top of that tournament. So in that regard, I think it played out really well and 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 worked well for the the event and the show. Yeah, I think it will play out uh, pretty well. There's uh, a few other things coming up uh, tournament-wise that have not aired yet that I think should be uh, pretty intriguing. But um, for you, though, from a competitor, from a champion standpoint, uh, everything that went on this season, is there anything, any sort of, uh, you know, constructive feedback that you would give as a, you know, I mean, I'd say if if I could describe the ultimate competitor in the sport, I would I would peg you for it because, you know, you're all business and, and no, no gimmicks uh, afterwards. But is there anything that you would say to Discovery or the folks at BattleBots as far as things that you might want to see changed or added in next time? You know, I actually really liked the format. I liked the way it was laid out. I liked most of those things. Um, it, a little bit more time for us to get ready certainly would have been a big help this time around because that that hurt a lot of folks. If you're going to have a tournament that's going to require this much depth, you know, you're going to have to win eight, nine, ten fights, something like that, to win the whole thing and go go the distance. Well, that's that's a lot of fights to the death, and so it's it's really hard to keep your robot running for that time frame. And the more time that we have to get ready, the better the robots are going to run through that long haul. And realistically, that was my, that was my my only real problem with all this is between the time when we we got it for sure that it was going to happen, and my God, thanks to Discovery for getting us back on the air. Um, but the, by the time we had to show up, it was only just a few weeks, and so it was hard to really get everybody as ready as they would like to be. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, this uh, pairing of you guys and Discovery and the Science Channel is one that can last a while. I, I mean, ABC was great. I, there's no denying that, but it just it still didn't feel like it was the right fit for what you guys were. Now, it was a huge change of pace and a much better one at that from the Comedy Central days because as great right. of a sport as it's always been, that was very much uh, sort of a punchline uh, back in the day. Yeah. But it's great to see it survive for this long and obviously what looks like flourish now. Um, for you, though, you mentioned the family affair that this is, uh, you and mm-hmm. your son Justin, and we've seen a lot of kind of uh, passing of the uh, the radio control, you know, passing of the torch uh, from father to son uh but my question would be on that uh one 
has that been a discussion as far as that could be what the future holds? And then on top of that, can we have Tombstone without Ray Billings? I, that's those are interesting questions. Um, J- Justin has driven in a lot of tournaments. He has quite a few combat matches, a lot more than most of the people that are on the show, to be honest. Um, and so he he's very adept at driving. He, he'd be a great driver to, to, to drive any of the robots. Um, and so it would be interesting to turn him loose on, with something. Uh, I'm just not really ready to give up driving myself. <laughs> so, so some of this, I guess, is just rather selfish on my part. Um, it, about the only way we could end up doing something like that would be if we were to split the team up and let him drive something and me drive something else. Oh boy. And I, you know, that, that I've, I've actually given that some thought, just, just turning Tombstone over to Justin and building something new for me. Um, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's all like most things in life. It's all about time and money. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if I could make all of that happen, but I, I got to admit it would be kind of interesting to see how he'd do. Yeah, I wonder how well he would fit into uh, a TV character. Would he still be uh, portrayed as the villain because he's the son of, of Ray Billings, or would they kind of try to steer him a different way? To see you two against each other, I think, would be worth uh, the entertainment value right there. <laughs> yeah, it probably would be pretty interesting. And, and he's, you know, not surprisingly, he's a lot like me. So I think he could pull off any sort of character they want him to play. <laughs> Well, TV needs its stories and it needs its characters above all. Even reality TV has its characters. And so uh, TV is going to spin it however they want to. And I think that they've they've spun you pretty good. I, I'm glad that I know you the way that I do so that I can say, you know, as as much of a uh, of an evil person as he is in that battle box, he's probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And so I, I'm very happy that uh, I got to come down and, and witness it firsthand. But uh, you, you play the part very well, and I, I cannot wait <laughs> – for uh hopefully uh because i've been i've been saying this for a while now i want those uh sorry about your floor t-shirts <laughs> oh that yeah that would be funny and, it, and, and it's funny because that was all just kind of be me being sarcastic at the moment because you know <laughs> I, I i laid that floor open really good and you know it's it after the match was over the 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 referee john he goes you know you don't have to apologize for the floor <laughs> <laughs> and, and i'm like no no, I, I did. I think we needed that on camera. <laughs> yeah, be, between uh, you and that comment and then John Remar saying that there, you, you can't tap out, that was probably one right. of my favorite moments, too. It's just, <laughs> you, yeah, you, there's but, no tapping out, guys. <laughs> there's no tapping out in that box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was funny. <laughs> All right. Well, Ray, I look forward to the uh, remainder of the season. And I know for you guys, this is kind of the, the long haul because you all know uh, how it played out, how you did, and now you're watching it. But, you know, on that, uh, what what's it like in your household to, to watch this? Do you guys have, like, a special viewing party? And even if you know the outcome, you're just like, you know, do you hold yourself back from saying, oh, watch this. You're gonna, you don't want to miss this. Like, how's it go for you guys? Yeah. You know, what? We've, we've had some get-togethers. Usually it's with other builders in the area will kind of get together and watch some of the shows um and uh and that that's always fun because then there's usually a mix of people that don't know what's happening with most folks that do know what's happening and so it's <laughs> you, you know we, we've had some pretty fun times with that it's it's a it's a great community to be part of they're, they're just some of the best folks that you could ever possibly meet in your life yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, you know, there's such a wide variety of different people. And, and what I love the most about what I did down there was that these are people that don't normally get the chance to get uh, to, to tell their story or, or make comments on stuff. I mean, when you when you're like me and you deal with athletes at nine times out of 10, like they've been there before, they, they know what to say when you ask certain questions. But for you guys, you know, uh, depending on who you get, this might be a whole new world for them and a completely different experience. <laughs> and it was uh, very fun for me on, uh, in that regard, just to see people kind of, you know, open up about themselves and be like, oh, like you, you want to know about me? It's just like, absolutely. You know, this is let's <laughs> let's have some fun with it. And you're never short of a comment either. And I can't wait for the uh, the video stuff that we did to, to get posted once we've reached that point in the season. But, hey, uh, I don't good. I'd love to be your guys' pit reporter, and hopefully we uh, can see season four. But, Ray, a pleasure as always. Thank you so much for coming on the show. No problem, and it was good to have you down there. So, yeah, hopefully we'll get to all do this again for a season four. All right, sounds good. Well, you take care of yourself. You have a good night, and enjoy the rest of the season. 
All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. All right. That was Ray Billings of Tombstone, the most feared bot in the Battle Box. And you guys can catch an all new episode of BattleBots this Friday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. It is robot fighting time. And, of course, I'll have a bit more for you guys uh, tomorrow night. But uh, my apologies again for not being uh, very well prepared this evening. As I mentioned, I didn't even expect to do a live show. I thought I was going to you know, do kind of a special and pre-record a before and after because I was going to be out fishing for part two of me and Bobby Brown but uh, things change things happen things come up and it's okay that's the way that life is and we move on we overcome we adapt we give it our best so once again big thank you to all of you who have liked the Facebook page we are now at a thousand I will announce a winner after the weekend for the swag bag uh, from the fan show and uh, anyone else who wants to contribute something, this uh, swag bag could be a lot of fun (laughs) now that I think about it. Tomorrow we will wrap up our uh, first full week of August episodes. That's right, uh, August the 9th tomorrow, and we will have... Uh, looks like the owner of the Massachusetts Pirates, Hassan Yatim. He's going to join me. Uh, possibly Carolina Cobra's uh, favorite wide receiver, uh, receiver Philip Barnett, may be stopping by for another special because uh, they've got they've got business to attend to this weekend, both Mass and Carolina. First round of the playoffs. We will go into that more in depth tomorrow. Don't forget to. Uh, subscribe however you subscribe. If you can't listen live, iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and now Spotify, and of course Spreaker is always there. If you want to listen live and you want to interact, there is a chat feature for Spreaker.com. Go to Spreaker.com slash user slash The Fan Show. You can also listen live on TheFanShow.com. Just click the live tab. And then I've got uh, homework to do for Full Sail. I'm going to keep on trucking with my Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting degree. And I am about uh, first, my first quarter is done. And boy, it was, uh, wow, it was, it was tough. So I'm glad that I am pressing on, onward and upward, on to the next, as Nick Hag would say. And that will do it for this Wednesday edition of The Fan Show. Give us a like, give us a follow, give us a share. Uh, Spread the joy, spread the love. That is The Fan Show. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners. And remember, of course, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez? Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.